get brand if one of them's going to get a dominant jungle matchup, which they can start running the game with. Of course, on the other side, that was a question for LNG last year. What happens when Tarzan isn't playing well? The team just didn't look the same, and both these junglers, such high impact when they are on their game that when they are having just a normal one, they sometimes uh, leave a hole the rest of the team can struggle to fill. Bans coming on through Nidley against Tarzan, who has been... I think earning of the the niddly pass in recent yeah. games. So, so getting rid of that makes some sense. So, just to put this out the put this out there because this will affect future drafts. The players with niddly passes in the LPL right now are Tien, Kanavi, and I think Tarzan. Now, some people will say, well, why isn't Shun there? Well, Shun hasn't been playing that champion to win with that very often, so that's not necessarily even something which BLG have managed yeah. to do. Very powerful pick. The Leona also very powerful. I will say, though, Mako had a bit of a duff series last time out, though, um, when they did, of course, lose to LNG. And that a lot of that was through Mako not playing the tank frontline very well on Leona, which I'm very surprised about because he's been so good at that this year. I think it's also telling that Top Esports ban away the Nidalee and the Sejuan themselves, considering how good Tien is at both of those. And of course, either side of the matchup can be a bit obnoxious. The Nidalee normally very good yep. at punishing a Sejuani, but the response from Weibo are very rapid ash. So are you going to lock in Braum now, or are you going to lock, lock it on three? You can choose to hold your cards a little closer to the chest. Leona is awful versus Braum, and Ash Braum is the best duo for Braum. That typically tends to be uh, the logic, because Braum doesn't need to be the primary engage. He's better at follow-up engage, and that really, really helps. Now, this is a bit different. Top Beast was lost to Scout playing that Yone just the other day, so that might be something which is locked in for either of these two mid laners, but uh, it would have been very... And Shadow right, has been fun. looking better that. But as we said, the Ash Braum keeps your cards a little closer to your chest, and it is the best duo for Braum, and Braum is very good into Leona. That's your logic. Makes a lot of sense. Of course, there was no real way for it to be taken away by top esports, but by the same token, you maybe reveal a bit more about your draft if you don't pick, if, if you pick something other than the Braum there, so that makes some sense. Tien, debating a Zyra, there's a couple good options. It does feel like Zyra, as people have realized how good she is, has really supplanted no pun intended, the likes of Karthus, who was yeah. the initial AP god. So, no, so Karthus can still be a real factor. He did hit, get some nerfs to him in terms of his, yeah. um, his clear, clear, clear speed to an extent. It's not enough to take him out of the meta. It's just it's way easier to have extra kind of fa facets of your kit as a Zyra or a brand or something like that. Um, you build more HP items than the Karthus, and particularly with the Zyra as well. You can play from longer range because yeah. your plants kind of artificially expend um, you bring your extend as well. So we did talk about that Yone being uh, a pick which is pretty good for Xiaohu, which is weird because if you think towards the start of summer, it was not good. It was no. pretty awful. He has said in interviews that he's been learning um, from Shovi and talking about how he shouldn't be the first person into the play. You follow up with the with the Yone. Notice what we said about the Braum earlier. That's the follow up CC. So um, yeah, it does feel like now Xiaohu and Chris have that follow up if Light is very accurate or if there's another engaged source coming in from Tarzan. The first target from Top Esports is going to have to be very, very careful. Yeah, because whoever gets hit is about to have a hell of a pylon coming on through already between the Yone and everyone else throwing in the additional CC. Passionate there from Weibo Gaming's coach who, but, but with that kind of that look, I feel like he should be like curating an art gallery somewhere. It's got a real sort of like avant-garde air to him. I appreciate the look. <laughs> Hey, we'll see what his opinions are. I mean, I guess we're just gonna see Jin and Hui every game. Yeah. Like pre raphaelite like, come on now. <laughs> I, 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 I wouldn't know enough to speak about that. <laughs> Getting into the second round of bans. Um, of course, Wei Wei don't have any magic damage. Rumble's gone. There might be worth banning out Kennen from Breathe at that point, just because there is no magic damage to do that. But I guess Tarzan can still go towards the brand, and the brand would be very powerful. The fact that actually, the fact that brand has made its way That's through kind of mad, is kind of mad. I think you now go towards either Brand or Karthus here for, for Tarzan. I think that'd be very powerful for them. Oh. Um, because I think they do still need some extra magic damage. They could also angle towards a cannon if they particularly wanted to, but that would be a blind pick cannon. And again, someone like 369 can be quite risky. BLG should try to do something similar the other day, though. Uh, they're looking for magic damage all the same. <coughs> Excuse me, as I... Uh, it's the Zyra. It's exactly. The Zyra, again. It's, it's, Zyra it's, pressing it's, W. It's, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm getting hay fever. I don't normally get hay fever. Maybe I'm getting... Digital hay fever, courtesy <laughs> of Zyra, is that uh, the misfortune locked in are here, as has been increasingly common. You've already got the Leona, you've already got the Zyra. We saw last game exactly how deadly roots are plus misfortune. Cassante blind pick here for 369. That's partly why you wonder whether they got rid of the Nar, which has often been 
something of at least a lane matchup into that. So, what does Breathe have to work with? Yeah, Breathe has looked for lane dominance typically, and Breathe has been very good at playing through lane dominance. It has been something of a, a of a powerful pickup for Weibo. You're looking for something where he can kind of just bully about 369. 369 is going to have teamfight impact. He's on the Cassante. How do you stop okay. him from having impact elsewhere? You lock it a Camille and you say, good luck in the side lane later on. Breathe taking the dominant matchup versus that Cassante and trying to see if he can outvalue uh, in side lanes and in terms of that laning phase. Weibo, they somehow get Tarzan brand. I think he's one of, I think yeah. he is the best brand within the LPL right now and maybe one of the very best in the world at the same time. Weibo, they have a great following the arrow, the Camille and the follow-up CC from Yone and Braum passive beyond that point becomes so, so deadly. So Weibo, I think their composition has a very, very coherent identity top esports. They also do three long range champions with the bullet time and the strangle thorns and the rockets coming out of the rookie standing behind a double front line. Now, if the front line cannot stay alive beyond that first pick from Weibo, this team composition falls apart. So top esports need to be on their front line A game. Mako and 369 are very good at that style of play, but recently it hasn't looked like it's been working yeah. out for them as well. Weibo, I like what they're doing here. It gives all of their players aggressive options, and Weibo, they are on the up and up. This team has looked like it's recovered a lot of their form. They've tricked us before, though. Oh, yeah. See if they've tricked us yet again? Uh, we'll see. And then, of course... For the side of Weibo, they've got a composition which can end up becoming a bit of a snatch and grab comp where you go looking for that isolated target, someone you think is out of position, and then you mess it up or you don't clean, kill that first person cleanly, and suddenly the team fight bulwark. The top esports are drafted could certainly punish and over engage on something like that Camille or something like that Yone. To be very, very aware. We have got Plants versus Zombies again, Zyra versus Brand. Those two junglers in that matchup could prove pivotal here in two very different styles of play that have been drafted for our game one. Top Esports versus Weibo Gaming about to hit off. It's Ascension Games for today. The teams which won through in their group stage. Weibo slotted in just about at the last time of asking, but they made it all the same, and those results don't have to matter at all now. Let's see if they can take it to Top Esports. Some big fan support today. You can hear the crowd live and alive here to be supporting their teams. And you can see a lot of big neon signs for their favorite players. People like Mako at this point. Some of the longest standing and most successful players. Huge neon signs there cheering them on yeah. in the crowd. Uh, you know, Weibo, they've they've been a fan favorite before, particularly when they had the Shy. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you've got Jackie Love on a roster for Top East, was always very, very popular. Breeds is going to walk into Tien. Uh, now, it is worth noting that if you disrupt the seeds, you disrupt the clear. Hasn't made Tien go through those seeds just yet, though. And with the E, it's not like you can kind of like do a hook shot through a lot of them at the same kind of time. So Tien will still be on full clear speed. Zyra not really interrupted enough. Is known quantity, so he will be going from top to bot. Tarzan starting on bot side. I wonder what that means for jungle invades and stuff. Bree uh, the, the, the brand is worse on the first camp clear than the Zyra, which means that sometimes the Zyra can cross Doing over the river and do this. So what this means is that Tien is trying to, again, blockade this top side and say, all right, Tarzan, you cannot go towards top side. You're not going to have um, enough kind of like camps up here to make it worthwhile for you. Now, the rest of the map needs to evolve with this. We saw this from Rare Atom the other day when they got invaded on the top side and they struggled to adapt beyond that point. Weibo with Tarzan, they have really gotten a lot of value out of their early path. And Tien will be going for a full quadrant invade. Tarzan will likely be doing the same. But what do the lanes do to respond to this? Be the question and of course it does mean the Camille is going to be isolated not having the easiest time of playing as aggressive as she might otherwise like bot side though Jackie and Mako have a little bit of a HP they got tagged by the winners by the turnaround coming on through but Tarzan's coming on over could still prove deadly if they over play their hands down here was that not even sticking around for the level three? So he only gets the one camp away, doesn't take that buff, red buff. Yeah. So Tarzan may be a little bit worried that Cream was going to get towards uh, bot side earlier and that Tien could walk away after just doing one camp. So that does mean that Tien is ahead in terms of the jungle camp advantage, unless Tarzan gets a double scuffle, which I don't think is usually likely at this point. Tien, really good early pathing from him to deny Tarzan 
um, you know, early gold. When you are AP junglers, I keep saying this every time we see big jungle camp trades, getting a CS advantage with an AP farming jungler is a win condition in itself. These champions are not fair late game. Milky Way showed us that versus oh, yeah. AP the other day, kind of the solo carry in the late game fights. You don't really want to be starting that off early if you're on the losing side of that. When your 1 and 5 brand ends up doing the most damage in team fights and suddenly ends up at 7 and 5, you know that the game has turned around just a little bit. You always have that win condition, even if you are behind, just purely by getting towards that second and a half item, that that just level 11, level 16 on some of these junglers could be so, so brutal. Tarzan on the brand could try and pull a Milky Way should it turn up into that situation. So, um, slide advantage to Tien. He's going to get himself the Scuttle Crap as well, finish off the, the last of his camps he had on that first clear, get himself towards that. Tarzan's trying to get into a lane instead. Now, if he, if he impacts a lane with level 3 brand, which is very, very powerful, that changes things. Now, Tien is on top side, but he's going for the Scuttle. Wave crashes in, so 369 is going to be putting down a ward. He has now used his ward, and Weibo do not... Well, Tarzan's completely off vision. Get the hook shot into the Pillar of Flame makes this a very scary position. 4369, a flash for the seer means first blood to breathes Camille. So, we were talking about jungle CS, it's a win condition. You know what else is a win condition? C Camille breathe. ahead of yeah. <laughs> breathe Camille ahead of Cassante. So Weibo, again, for those of you who are watching these games, maybe from a perspective of watching Weibo in spring and in group stage, I understand saying, what the hell? Where has this Weibo been all along? Let me introduce you to Weibo. This team has one of the largest fluctuations in in style that I have ever, ever seen. seen. Yep. Ever seen. They're up there with the KT Rolsters of the world and your CLG counter logic truly um, of the times of, of past. Tarzan getting himself into that lane. And Tarzan's early pathing has revolutionized this team. It's added like an extra direction so these pieces can all pull together. So this play starts out with the hook shot. Um, 369 goes for E instead of going for um, the W, which means he can't get the E out of that. He flashes out of the W from, from the brand, doesn't therefore have the flash to get out of the Q stun. Breathe picks up the kill. And now Breathe can really start to roll ahead, potentially. Improve pretty problematic here. Particularly if uh, that Camille can get out of hand. Of course, it does come at the cost again of a Raptor camp. And Tien has been taking the opportunity to get more camps on the road. There's a uh, gate down towards the bot lane. Flash away from Light. But the turnaround now pretty good as Tarzan done forced the flash in trade from Mako. Yeah, that Braum value was huge. What did we... So, very first picks. We saw the Leona first pick and then the Ash Braum locked in immediately after. I love Ash Braum into the Leona. I think that Nautilus can play out the lane fine by just pressing W, putting that shield on. Leona kind of has to go in, so if you don't get to do that, it really, really sucks. So the fact that the Ash Braum gets value there, gets the flash out of Mako, uh, you can see how valuable that can be. However, Light also down the summoners is that they need to be protective of the AD carry. Light took more damage than Jackie, of course, but Jackie at this point burned a lot of the mana. Particularly the Make It Rain is a huge mana sink on Miss Fortune. It does have a particularly big mana pool, so... That ability to uh, slow people down in the AoE can be a uh, mm. little bit costly there for the MF, who might be in danger here, not knowing when Chris is, who steps on forwards, looking for that passive auto, <laughs> will instead throw down a Q, Jackie in danger, has the cleanse, cleanses early, actually. Cleanses for the slow, would have given the tenacity too, but wanted to make sure that the actual passive didn't make its way through as well, Chris, for, so for those of you, there are some brawn mechanics that show that you get a slight movement speed increase when you have the shield up, you use that after your jump, and you can surprisingly chase people down very easily in the laning phase. So the stand behind me, the shield helping uh, get themselves onto that target, blowing a summoner and meaning that now Jackalove needs to be very afraid of the upcoming level 6 for light, especially with all of the follow-up CC coming in from Weber. Top East was this early game, it's not been exactly what they wanted. I feel like Tarzan's got a little bit of the better of them. Getting themselves the grubs could help an awful lot though if they get themselves options to attack side lane turrets and avoid Weber. Yeah, and the gold remains dead even, largely off. Good laning still from the side of Toppies, but they're still in a good position here in the sense that they will be a great team fight team. Mm. They picked up some grubs early, double AD carries, surviving the lanes just fine, but they do end up in a position where particularly the side lanes get ahead of the curve. A Yone and a Camille with gold gets pretty scary. It does. So, Top Eastwards needs to be afraid of the arrows coming through. Also, um, it's always worth noting when Ash is in the game, one of the big things about them and engaged supports being around right now is that they don't build the Mikhails. So when you see the Rakan coming through, which we saw earlier in the day, that's good against the Ash. The Leona can, can struggle there because you want to go towards um, the Warmogs. You want to go towards sometimes even like a Zeke's as well just because the base value of that item is really high and it's very cheap. But you don't often go towards something like that Mikhails, which means that you are relying on QSSs and the cleanse on Jackalove, which is not that great because they're quite high cooldown and they don't apply to the whole team. Mm. Definitely do that. Keep our eyes on it as uh, 
Tarzan starts up the dragon, of course, as Brand. You do burn through objective well here. Grubs is normally the one he does a little bit faster because you can spark the passive off each other and get big AoE damage from that. But Cyrek claimed those ones a little earlier. Tien also got the invade to claim uh, another red buff and is doing a really good job of roaming with Mako, getting into the enemy jungle, yeah. trying to get some of those camps away from Tarzan, who was tried at the trade back by at least impacting lanes, but is still coming at the cost of his own well-being a little bit. So, if you're wondering why, um, like, we don't see as much Shin Sao and less Lee Sin, the amount of early work you need to do to get into lanes and skirmish your way through to a victory is really, really high before... That, that was a bounce. How the hell did that hit one? Um, it's really, really high to outvalue um, something like Azira who gets a load of gold. So, Tarzan gave up a lot, of a lot of camps for the opportunity to get in towards this top lane. So, that can be a win condition. Camille is a very deadly champion, particularly two item Camille is where that champion goes nuclear, really. But we need to see now from, uh, from Weibo... Remember, Mako still doesn't have a flash, could be in serious danger here. Now the damage comes on for the Eclipse Shield is solid. Jackie now in danger as well, has to flash away because there is no cleanse. Another Winter's Bite lands, the turnaround is good, but the door, phenomenal! Stops so much of the bullet time damage, a flash on in from Tarzan, ensures a wait! Misfortune still gets a kill on the way out. Jackie buying his life in blood. The shield was fantastic from Chris, I thought Chris would outplay, but he still gets taken down into the watery depths of Bilgewater, Misfortune claiming that one. Jackalove will be up and with the strut will be able to get towards the lane fairly quickly, but still, I think overall a win for Weibo. They might be able to get themselves a couple of minions. Dying to tower, Breeze needs to be careful here. Delays himself that ah. hook shot. Strangle forms afterwards though means surely a dead Breeze as well. He'll be breathing no more. The Hexic ultimatum is solid though, but it's an execute because of course Breeze had no damage on the Zyra. One of my biggest complaints of Zyra jungles is why are people not using the E plants well? The W placement in pro play hasn't been great. People know how to use the Q, they know how to use the root, they don't know how to use the plants all the time. I speak as someone who's played too much Zyra recently in terms of arena. arena. A yeah. thousand games of that champion. By the way, really good play from the E plants there. We're gonna go towards the bot side here, uh, I would imagine, first. But you can see that the arrow ends up just tagging uh, Mako, which then allows the follow-up CC to come in from the Braum. This is the power of the Ash Braum. It's not just the arrows. The follow-up CC beyond that point, and the rundown potential is really, really nasty. Great shield coming in from Chris blocks out the entirety of that bullet time, but then uh, what ends up happening here is uh, the double tap uh, auto reset ends up just taking down Chris. Bit of a miscalculation there. We didn't get to see that top side. We get to see it now. Oh, Tarzan went looking for that one with Chris, and uh, can't quite find. He's going to teleport out instead to safety. Reed now in danger on the other side, though, in a 1v2. Got a 1v3 is Tien at the top of our screen. will be coming on down here as well as Camille. About to be under attack again. Arrow coming, coming on down. down. Is that going to be accurate? It's going right the way down the river. It's following Xiaohu as well. Breeds alone down here. He misses. misses. But here comes Xiaohu all the same. Has flash, has ult. And Mako danger. is out of this team's radius. Teleport coming on through. It'll be a one versus four now. Breeze still in danger. Xiaohu nearly here. Wants to get something back. Gets a fate sealed with that soul unbound to allow a ping back. But the roots are pretty huge. Xiaohu gets Mako. Turret shots coming in to fly on through. Is Xiaohu though tanking up the minions. Ensure the top esports pick up a second in trade for just the one. And that's going to be like three waves lost to turret. Especially with the bullet time coming through to clear out the wave. Weibo have just lost a huge play on this side. Breeze, who was meant to be the win condition for Weibo, has been put behind him. You know... Top Esports, they lost a great series to BLG, they lost the series to um, LNG as well. And it felt like, uh, you know, what people were starting to doubt Top Esports. And I have to say, I have to a certain degree too, but you have to wonder whether that was the schedule of flying back and forth. And uh, coming back into the Rumble stage later than, than some of these other teams. And this kind of game shows us why we are still very afraid of Top Esports if we are opponents of them. Because, god damn, they're really quite good at playing through these early games. When particularly Tien gets to press the go button. Very, very powerful from him. He's now a thousand gold up. Is 2-1-1 one, and one on this arrow. We're going to go see ourselves a replay of this too. Breathe. I don't really think he should be left on the weak side. I think that Breathe should be played towards more and more heavily. I'm really surprised that he's been left alone here for so long. The teleport from Cream was necessary. If that wasn't there, I think Xiaohu can clean this up. Sadly, Xiaohu kind of sits there. He uses his E early. I wonder whether he should have just flashed knockups instead. It would have put himself into a better position. I think maybe just using the E at that point leads the, the return point in the middle of the plants, in the middle of the minutes. It just leads to an easy death. It does, unfortunately, at that. And I appreciate the look in, but it was still a two versus four. And because Breathe couldn't really use the Hexec Ultimate by that much time, kind of died before anyone really took aggro. It ends up being pretty tricky. This turret's about to fall out as Jackie gets that one. First turret of the game being donated to the Fortune. Feeling pretty good here. And Jackie, in general, 
Oh, a solid enough game on the Misfortune, despite some of the attempts from Light and Crisp to make his life very, very tricky. Has a Bloodthirst early, yeah. and that's before the resets come on for him. Yeah, and the fact that he's now ahead, like a thousand gold, despite the fact that Light and Crisp are doing pretty damn well in that laning phase. Um, is a problem. Yeah. Now, the fact that Breathe is not that far ahead is also a problem. You need to get to that two-item Camille ASAP now, because Top Esports are getting towards a point where they are very, very happy to start rolling over objective fights. Uh, top oh, Esports... That last plate. <laughs> yeah, last plate, not quite. Just there. He'll have another 40 seconds. Should be okay with them. Jack Love using the uh, the bullet time and the Grub Grub to just get that DOT on the turret and get himself that plate himself. A little bit there as well. We saw up on screen as Jackie's having his stats shown up as well. Nice live stat count. I appreciate that, but... 85% win rate with the first turret taken for these boxes is a very impressive number. They have not dropped a lot of games this year. Uh, well, that's just from Summer. So for me, that's actually quite a bad stat because they've won so many games. The fact that they end up losing wow. any in general something. The arrow's going to go wide again. Tarzan misses his stun. Looking for a smite still, but he's rooted. Big turnaround there. And my god, the Zyra damage with the bullet time over the top is just foul. Mako traded back to the Glacial Prison. Sorry, Glacial Fisher lands onto Jackula, but he will still be going to the Prison of Death. In comes Camille from downtown as well. And Top Esports on the extraction. Lose two. At least Tien gets one back, but it's rooted under terror and will surely fall as well. The Raid Boss. No, breathe. Good slow. The E slow and the red buff do enough to keep Tien alive. Tien, 5-1-1, one, and, one, and Weibo, maybe they wish that Top Eastles hadn't watered that house planet quite as much. It is deadly flora in the jungle from Top Eastles. Weibo, it looked like they just cleaned things up, but they don't quite manage to get that calculation right. The, the start of that dragon fight was really not good. It was Safari League of Legends. Just watching the objective going down, there wasn't the best entrance to it. Afterwards, the follow-up was really powerful. We might get ourselves another fight around this Herald too. Four versus five as well. Three, three six, and we just top lane on the Cassante, getting another turret, so... Let's value out of that. It looks a bit messy, but the extended play still under bouquet is Jackie now stepping on forwards. Crisp in danger. Could well be going down as the all-out comes on down onto the Braum. Santa Braum put on his own naughty list. That was a really nice play from 369. Flashes for the ult as the Braum stun comes through, so he doesn't get sits, like isolated in the front line. Really good stuff from him. And we know exactly how well he can play uh, when he gets tanky enough and can be disruptive enough. Kareem's jumping forwards now onto Shao here, just looking for a bit of poke. But Weibo, um, they have been kind of called blow for blow by top esports. I feel like this play was just a slow approach. You can see that the arrow missing doesn't help because if the arrow hits, it's so much easier to kill that first target. I think the fact that Light has missed so many of the arrows has really changed this game. If you get to walk up to that point, it becomes a really powerful moment to get the Pyroclasm down on someone important. Just hasn't ended up being like that. Great Glacial Fissure to keep things up. I think Chris has had a good game so far on the Brawn, but just on the whole, it's not quite everyone firing off in the all cylinders at once, and it's giving these cracks in the team fights where Tien can start to outplay. Turns around for the red buff on one, gets himself a red buff on the other one, flashes over and the slow, as you rightfully said, leads to Tien getting that kill. Clutch smite, clutch red buff slow. That was clean, and now he's at Ryalai's very, very early Tien. A jungler who has been in the running for MVP as the whole LPL had a, a quiet couple Light last game. He's now in a dangerous position. Arrow does indeed come through. We'll talk about Tien a little later as the burn is down, but the Braum door is enough to prevent a house fire. Haven't seen these arrows get the value that way, but once Xiaohu has Q3, can potentially go in here. Yes, finds it. Cream. Oh no, Cream was thinking he was safe, but managed to Valkyrie over the wall. Xiaohu, though, can still trade back. We'll be able to get some more damage coming back as he pings back and pulls the flash out of Cream. Who knows? It could have gotten pretty ugly there with the blade moving again. Mako is now in danger himself. Tarzan throws out the pillar of flame, but a knockup prevents Dracula from getting that much value out of the bullet time. Trying to trade back on the line, the 1v2, but it's just not far enough to go. Puts on the afterburners, but light brings him down. Bow and arrow beats guns. Tien finally falls, will be brought low eventually, but claiming that huge shutdown is big, big news for life. These fights are so scrappy. Both of these teams are really aware of what they have to uh, move around the map and the globals they can use. The fact that Top Esports are outvaluing Weibo in this is really going to be what determines this this mid game, I think, because we're seeing, oh, you know, Mako not really in the safest whoa, place, whoa, whoa. but he should be okay. So we, we, we can <laughs> calm down for now. We can calm down for now. Xiao, who has himself that global, the flash, and the ultimate coming back up. That's what Weibo have to fight with the next kind of calling card. Um, I think because we have one dragon apiece and three grubs apiece, we're probably going to see a continuation of this scrappy game because there's no like game ending soul point at this point. We've got lots of big movements around the map. It means that vision starts to go around the place too. Great ultimate coming from Jackal. That's about as best as you can get in that situation. But he does put himself out of position to do so. So the ult was good. The fact that you stand there against an Ash Braum, less good. It's quite fortunate that here that Light ends up picking up another kill because that should have been dead to rise there as well. 
he gets that huge shutdown. That gold even stole 2,000 for Misfortune. Evened up both AD carries now. Giga fed. Four kills on the Ash, including that shutdown. Yeah. Brings him to two items very, very early. I think in the it's game. fascinating that with the that we got the hurricane coming through from light as well. I think this is typically when you see the hurricane, it's one for two oh, geez, reasons. Yeah, yeah. One, your Twitch, or two, you're looking for big wave play. It's not necessarily the Phantom Dancer, which gives you really good move speed as the Ash to keep kind of um, moving forwards in plays. When you have approach velocity, you have um, you know, loads of abilities to move forwards with the Kraken Slay giving you movement speed and then also that as well can really help. Yes, the Hurricane gives you some movement speed, but it's not quite on that same level. This is here for that wave clear. Is it enough to deal with the Herald? I don't think so. I also quite like it into Zarya because you can take out her plant so much easier with Hurricane. You can auto a lot of them down a bit more freely and it makes Tien's life a little bit harder in terms of getting that value. Small little thing. We'll see whether it pays out that well. Of course, the wave clear is not very valuable, especially considering outside of Tarzan is really the only range wave clear. That can be very powerful, but uh, yeah, it does feel like Weibo. They're looking to play towards 1 3 1 with Shao and Bree. They do have double teleports and the rewards here. It wouldn't surprise me to see them go towards this arrow and go for big teleports. They can look for a flank here from Shao, who's still off vision. Tien's about to face check the Yone. Oh my days. Observers yeah. bait us all, and Tien gets to yeah. walk away. I think if Weibo wanted to pay, pull, pull that fight, they would have teleported. Now, Shao, who is teleporting to the sideline. Look, again, it's not sold point. Breather's going forwards. He can ult forwards here, all out. Not going to bring here. the ultimatum. Bait seal still lands, trying to get the damage to the Now he doesn't have the resist anymore and goes down. So this is why earlier I was saying, I feel like the scrappy gameplay is going to continue. There's no sold point. There's no huge advantage just yet. Top esports, they're ahead in terms of gold, but Weibo, they're playing towards 1-3-1. They say, okay, take the dragon. We're opening the map. And we'll use that to our advantage later on so we can start again looking for these scrappier plays where maybe the Camille now at two items and then of course Xiao here as well also now at two items can start controlling the game from side lanes before top so can play around the big front to back team fights with their double front line. Let's see whether we get to that point freely. Two items are on the Camille. There's been two items in general beginning to come on through. And you noted earlier on in the game that look, three there's a win condition at two items at three could prove really scary this game. And 369, a couple cool team fights and uh, Survived be giving over first blood, but this Camille will still eventually become an absolute menace to deal with. Xiao Hu as well, going towards the Blade of the Ruin King build as well, not going for a crit build at least yet. Will also be pretty obnoxious for 369 because that percent HP damage proc twice so, on yeah. Yone. So, in regards to the crit, remember Shield Blood does give you that crit. Sure, it makes so, it like he's not gone Infinity Age and stuff. Yeah, no, I have to say, Yone and the grand majority of his Go builds lane, is yeah. still, blade, well, even throughout the last however many years, it has typically been Blade for the extra laning pressure and then some of the Shield Bows. Yasuo does similar because the problem in pro play is that if you're going into three, four people, you're going to take a lot of damage. The shield bow helps you towards that. You go towards the jacks or after that point, so you have enough damage with these two items. It allows you to just allow you to survive the initial engage, which is where things can be quite problematic. And we have seen, obviously, like the Infinity Edge third as well. I know Green was doing that the other day, but I think understandably, because you're going to be asked to be something of a frontline this game. Uh, the Jack Show, I think, makes sense into all of the upfront burst that Top Esports has. See already that uh, armor, um, the cloth armor yeah, yeah, yeah. coming in from Xiao Hu as well, which makes it a lot better that way. Xiao is going to charge up his Q3. One of the big things, there are a lot of different Yone mechanics to contract, which is basically you can try and play defensively by eating forwards. Alts out right now. Mako not going to be able to lock him down. Just with, her, just with uh, that solar flare. What you will notice is that Yonis will often eat forwards and not use their last Q3. They'll pop back and use that extra mobility to get out if they're playing defensive. Wait to see if Xiaohu does that one. Can help you survive a lot more situations and you can potentially um, realize at that point, particularly when you have the shield bow and the extra tank stats. See if Xiaohu can play, again, respectfully in this kind of game. The top is what's an incredibly punishing team. They have a lot of damage. You have Jackie Love and you have Cream on good items now as well. And of course, top is what are in the gold advantage. Top of was very rarely lose ever with a gold advantage, so Weibo they need to be very, very careful with the next few fights that they're picking. It'll be a difficult situation, that's for sure. And the gold lead is there for top. Well, that is off turrets they managed to claim, and obviously you can see just good farm numbers around about as Xiaohu pulls back again. Crisp is around, but so is Mako. Both supports mirroring each other on the map right now. These support moves have been so fun to watch because look, crit. Realistically, all of Weibo has been criticized at some point yes. this summer and this year. Chris was even subbed out at some point. I think we're seeing Chris have a lot of impact on this Braum. I think that we're seeing you know, Xiao who have some good side but he's three three and one, so he's obviously very powerful at this point. Breathe, I think, has been um, probably the most consistent member throughout groups and then into Rumble as well because Tarzan has such a crap start to groups. It wasn't good. And I think right now Tarzan is probably the most important player for Weibo because he has been so much of that team fight damage and his brand play has been so exceptional throughout summer as well. 
Weibo, the fact that they can finally get some of these players on form means that this is a contest. The, the Weibo at the start of summer would have lost by now, legitimately. The Weibo right now can contest with what was our best team in the league before, of course, BLG maybe showed us up on that one. Baron has potentially been spawned. Weibo do not have vision on him. I think Azira with so much gold as well means that there is a real threat of Baron at this point in the game. Potentially even a solo yep. at this point. Vision is gone. So, Zyra at two and a half items. You've got to be afraid. Toppy is supposed to want to at least get the teleport out of Breathe because that means that some of the side lane threat which Weibo are going towards is nullified. Shaoshu is here. He's trying to potentially get himself into Q3. Just hops over the wall, gets some vision, uses the Spirit Cleave to get that shield in case any turn around damage came through. Breathe is still left alone in bot side, so the teleport should be coming through. Here comes the arrow. Arrow lands, will hit onto one of the most valuable target though, it's still very dark, and now to half HP, this might actually just end up being the Baron, take their way too late, Tarzan flashes out of the bullet time, Baron secured, look at the fight afterwards though, can top finish up what they started, Mako low but not down, Tarzan eviscerated, in the back line goes Xiaohu though, alongside Breathe, the double soul lander trying to get something back as the Corky is dead, Breathe trying to run away but there's just not enough breath in the lungs. Light trading on out, doing his best he can to claim 369, but it's still top esports with the overall victory. Baron secured on three. That is exactly what top esports wanted. Get the summoners out of Weibo, get that teleport away from Breathe, and get them away from the goddamn side lanes, because that's what Weibo wanted to be doing. They get the kill, they get themselves um, the Baron as well, and the Bad Dragon has just spawned, so they can get themselves onto Soul Point. This is the gold standard of what they wanted out of that Baron power play. Weibo didn't even have a bad entrance to that. Honestly, so much of that play is just on 360. Nine, zoning out the damage from Weibo to make sure it wasn't a big cleanup fight. And sadly, the solo laners of Weibo couldn't get enough value. So top esports, this should be the game which breaks the game open for them. Going to be pretty tricky, of course. Weibo Gaming have managed to respawn. They're going to be around to contest for this Baron. Ready though, you can see. Top esports here and ready to play themselves. A few flashes blown on key members though. Cream and Jackie without a flash could prove yeah. problematic here. That could be. They still have so much damage though. We saw what happened when Weibo couldn't get the lockdown. You can see that Weibo, they have to give this up. Now the problem is, this is the problem with Safari League of Legends. You watch the objective go down and maybe you could have had a cross map by moving across the map. Uh, quicker to this. Because you look for a pseudo contest and you don't manage it, things kind of fall away. You do see the Zyra using the ult for the big Baron rush. Um, Tarzan tries to get in for a steal. I wonder if they should have just looked for the fight. It's quite hard to get away with this. 369, fantastic play from him. He just goes straight into that control ward as well, which means that Light misses an auto or two. Ends up getting himself a last kill onto the crisp somehow because he's Kasanse. And the double solo lane as a Weibo can't match the single solo laner of 369 in the back lane dive. That's insane. You only really get Mako, of course. Cream did fall eventually, but in some ways the damage is already done bluntly. You've lost Baron, you're now at sole point. Mm. Top Esports in full command of this game. And I don't know how much time the likes of Xiaohu can have on a side lane forced to ult away Shield Bow Pot. That's going to be its full tower taken, so that'll be even more gold coming over. And now the problem is, if you are sieging as top esports now, and Wave Weibo's response is trying, you know, get a flank teleport, doing that into the Seekers of Tien and the 2.5k gold lead of Tien, and so much damage from these double AD carries is so, so hard to manage. So Weibo... I think they fought well for a lot of the mid-game, but I think it's been quite clear that top esports were quicker on their globals, they were better at their team fight execution, and I don't even think Weibo played this game poorly, I think that the skirmishes have largely been good, I just think that top esports have been better, and look, they've lost two series, they lost to two very good teams in BLG, and then of course LNG, who have looked to level up their gameplay as well, this is not necessarily an indication on on um, Top Esports being terrible and awful. Going 0-2 is not what anyone expects, given how good they were from coming through from groups. But this is more the gameplay that we're expecting. Yeah. Maybe they're just getting back into gear. I'm gonna get the awful reminder in from Jackie Love here as well, wanting to get some anti-heal in, and obviously with the bullet time and the make it rain, really good uh, ability to spread that across the, the team when you're looking at a Ravenous Hydra, a Bloodthirst, or the Shield Bow, Yone in general. Like, it does make sense to have that kind of ability to cut some of that healing. It's also just really good stats on the whole. It's it's pretty nice for what it is. There's not a huge amount of armor on the other side, so it gives you some armor pen, but not having to index into it. Similar kind of situation with the Crypt Bloom Void Staff, where you're just looking for, um, you know, you're not looking for the full armor pen. Breathe is the problem. Hang on. Breathe. Oh, it's a pick in the jungle. Chris will get to hop away, stay alive. Solar Flare afterwards. Still not enough to keep him alive. Just burns down to the ignite. Does it? He just ends up... Ends up just completely eating every bit of damage that Top Esports can throw at him. Weibo, it's so hard to go into this group unit of Top Esports. And they managed to get themselves an important kill. The Baron's not even up, but just the siege and range of this team is going to make it so hard to defend this turret now. now what was looking a very even game. Very much isn't anymore the cohort of Top Esports here and sieging. 
could be very difficult to break through that phalanx not to mix my ancient unit metaphors, but here we are. Yeah, Chris, Chris Moore with the testudo slash <laughs> like shield wall at that point. I've not really got that many spears to stick out beyond the parapets and the, this one. That's the arrow coming through. It's not great, but they don't have the brawn for the follow-up CC, and Tarzan has burned out the half HP just by the thermal thorns. Jackie Love is getting very low, though. Shahu to the backline can't quite get onto valuable members. The stopwatch comes on through the TN. 369 bikes in space, and actually the burn on the top esports over the extended fight, proving pretty damn obnoxious. Another pillar of fire into the hog shoulder 369, not quite going down the floor. Comes on up. Hextech ultimate puts Mako in a dangerous position. The Zenith Blade takes him into the abyss. And another kill for Camille. Shao, who has flash, but he doesn't have Q3 and he doesn't have his ult. He's just gonna eat forwards and that's gonna be it. They're gonna try and stop some of these recalls. And again, this is why we view Weibo as one of these teams as quite scary. Regardless of who you are, even when they are behind in this game, they find themselves a pick. They have themselves that big burst, dynamic team fight, wombo combo kind of style coming through with this comp. And top esports, they don't manage to completely escape unscathed. Weibo starting to really turn on um, some of the damage numbers. Is it enough though? They're still behind six and a half thousand gold and top esports have huge items. And those opportunities don't come that often. And sadly, it is only a kill. It's not leading up to a dragon. It's not leading up to a baron. And now with the dragon and the baron both spawning in the next minute, they need to find themselves that team fight flank or a pick onto an extended target before the objective comes to bear. You've already got that Zonya's on Satyan. It won't be up luckily for them for the next minute. If they can force onto him, maybe that could cause something, but it's really hard for them to choose their right target. Oh, Shahu was so close to forcing Jackie to flash there, but couldn't quite get beyond all of the members of top esports. And I find credit to Tarzan as well for getting down all of that damage despite the chunks that came on through, but it doesn't earn as much as they were hoping for. Soul is on the line in 20 seconds. Baron's up as well, and top esports say, well, we'd rather have the Baron. All you're getting is second dragon. So once again, forced to face check. Ash has still got hawk shots though, so you have got some ways to face check at least. You do, it can help. Crisp uh, doesn't have that Warmogs yet. No. 30 minutes into That's the game. Rough. How bad does that feel? That's a huge advantage in some ways. It means that you're going to eat a lot of that poke. The dragon is going down very, very quickly. We're seeing more Safari League of Legends. Breeze going in. Jackie it's a shoot moment. The arrow landed onto the cream as well. That'll be danger onto the Corky. Trying to stay alive, but they lose. The Camille, the damage back, just not there in time. Shaohu is only here now. Infernal Soul claimed by Top Esports. And Weibo think they have the flank, they get both AD carry CC, and the damage just doesn't follow up. Fate Seal is only Shaohu's own. And they keep fighting on 369, does burn down, Tarzan does have Something. the damage. He's done 6,000 damage already, but it is not enough. Top Esports, the arrive of the objective first, Weibo once again plays Safari. And the wildlife comes to claw their throats out at the end of it. Mako can warm Ogs his way back up towards this Baron. Top esports for those that were thinking this team had uh, met their demise in recent weeks. You know, may be finding yourself sorely disappointed. They are here to play, and Weibo, despite their own level up in form, cannot match top esports here. Dragon gets burned down, Breeders on the flank, but he is a flanker alone. The arrow hits one person, and Breeders doing damage, but the Stranglethorns is there. There are still multiple people doing damage, and the fact is that top esports just don't have... Um, they're just not threatened enough on the back line. Shaohu is even spotted going over the wall here, and the all-out brings him back over. Shaohu can get to that fight in time. He didn't have that global. Weibo weren't there in time as a full unit to make this fight any closer. you think it was a bit of a bridge cream. Throws out so much damage and just takes down Light alongside himself going down. So it's going to be a kill onto one of the Baron buffs from top esports, and I think that's a shutdown, but taking down the Ash, really not what Weibo would have wanted. It has been, again, a very scrappy game. Weibo have been eating the worst end of it. I feel like the um, the carries of top esports, Tien, Cream, Jackalup, are getting so much damage in the turnaround that it makes it really hard to make the most out of this. Tarzan pops out of a brush, a uh, bit of a jump scare coming in from the zombie brand. It's a bit of a haunted house oh. there. Still not enough to save his AD carry. Uh, turns out Infernal Soul plus four items on Corky's quite a lot. It's only his first kill of the game, by the way, Cream. Uh, still though, do some damage and Chris. Very low there. Throws out the glacial fissure into the back line goes brief. Flash away from Jackie. Might not be enough to save a life, but the strangle thorns is absolutely ridiculous. And Jackie just stands and delivers with a little assistance from his team. Top esports have the gods of peel on their side. 369 and TN throw out their ultimates to save their AD carry. Can't quite get the damage. Again, Breeze diving too deep. You feel like they kind of have to go for the diving plays, but they're just getting laughed at by 369 and TN not getting caught in the engage. Imagine the fire back with their own big peel ultimates. 
Oh, it's so huge. And a reminder to anybody who didn't watch JDG last year, Ruler was a god. But part of why he was a god was because he had 369 in the top lane, being the most incredible peel top laner you have seen in your life. So good at the flanks, so good at using his skills to make sure his AD carry is unthreatened, unbothered, moisturized, and sitting <laughs> in the mid lane. And that Shao Hu just tagged a little bit with that slow coming over. Cream is probably going to force an ult out of him if he sees it, but luckily Tarzan is around to protect him. Top Esports, they have stopped Weibo from going towards these side lanes at all. I feel like Weibo just in one or two key moments before this lead exploded, couldn't quite execute on their fights. You would have imagined Breathe would have been able to take over the side lanes, maybe Shao Hu as well. The Top Esports have made the game about objectives. They've made the game about Weibo engaging too deep into their backline in these kind of hell for leather objective fights, and that has so but that has fit and it has completely gone towards the style of top esports composition in this game. There is a flank teleport available. Top esports might have overpushed in this one, but again, they have so many ultimates to peel for them. It's really hard for Weibo to get the damage down. So there's no to keep our eyes on this one. Inhibitor now about to be sieged. Will we see that teleport fall? I think Weibo just saying, look, we can't do this right now. We lose this, we'll, we lose this fight, the game is over. And they decide against taking the risk. Also, another big problem here as well is that when TN is pushing a lane for a long time, that passive spawns so many seeds, especially yeah. in late game. The cooldown goes an awful lot uh, further down than early game. It means you just get so many plants. And those plants with four or five items are utterly disgusting. TN strangle thorns are one thing. The plants are doing a hell of a lot of damage for another thing too. Top is what they've taken mid inhib, they've taken bot inhib, they're gonna take themselves the top inhib soon if that everything goes to plan. And sadly for Weber, they don't have that flank teleport ward on the top side, which means that they don't have that same option available to them. Can you afford to get three of to down? I don't think you can. Looking for a Q3, can't find it as Mako tries to go in himself. Yarrow hits onto the Leona, but it's not the clearest of targets. Yarrow really has only caught Cream once or twice, and even then, it's been hard to follow up. We haven't seen a combo between Shahu and Breed all coming together at once. And the bullet time in Trey puts Tarzan out of a 10 10% HP. Has to flash away, tries to turn around with the Pillar of Flame. And a Pyroclasm still available. Fate sealed away from Shahu again. Breathe down into the GA. 369 flashing on out. Breathe tries to get one back at the end of it all. But already the peel is there for 369 this time. There and is, he stays alive. There is always another peel tool for top esports. And Weibo, they're throwing themselves. But they're just getting dashed against the rocks. Three inhibs down. 369 teleporting in with a full HP bar. No Camille this time. Weibo falling. I'll oh, bring him into the kitchen and smell the citrus. I've never seen more peeled vegetables and fruits in my life. Weibo Gaming chopped to pieces and Top Esports clean up a phenomenal team fight game. For those of you wondering whether Top Esports had met their demise in summer, you are sorely mistaken. Weibo blown away in this first game and Top Esports showcasing that maybe it was just a case of schedule, a case of strong opponents. Weibo, they gave up a good fight but they could not give up uh, enough to challenge in that game truly. Really felt like they were just beaten across all of these skirmishes. Weibo, despite their own uptick in form, could not walk away with that win. One, with that win. Game one goes to Top Esports. And folks, hello, welcome. Hello. It's uh, it's been a long week. We're in our last day of our co stream games of the LPL. I'm Namera, also known as Alex. And this is Sam, also hello. known as Initialized. We're brothers and we cast together, bringing to you the games which are not broadcast on the LPL English channel. There are seven days of, ga seven days of games here every single week for the LPL. And because there's a lot of games here on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we thought that we'd end up throwing those games on our co-stream instead and cast them more like the official English broadcast so you don't get to miss out on that one. So we hope you're enjoying. Drop a follow, drop a prime. Myself and Sam's names are in the title as well. If you can follow us on our socials, keep up to date with what we're doing with the LPL here and keep yourself abreast of LPL knowledge.